Lesson 7. In 1493, in response to the first voyage of Christopher Columbus and at the request of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, Pope Alexander VI issued a decree which permitted and encouraged Spain and Portugal to colonize the New World. This decree stated that everything in the land became theirs. It encouraged not only the conversion of any indigenous peoples already living on the land, but also their enslavement, despite Queen Isabella's personal convictions about taking slaves from the world. The Second Journey Armed with new determination and the prestigious title of Governor of the Indies, Christopher Columbus set out on the second voyage in September of 1493. This time, with 17 ships and over a 1,000 men, they even brought cows, pigs, and horses. The hope was to settle this new land and discover gold. However, when he returned to Hispaniola, where he had established a small settlement during the last exploration, Columbus found that everything was destroyed and all of his men had been killed. Ignoring the wishes of Queen Isabella, who had sent him across the sea, Christopher Columbus established forced labor on the island and compelled indigenous people to rebuild the settlement. Upon his departure, he left his brothers, Bartholomew and Diego, in charge of the small colony. During this time, Columbus continued to search the islands for treasure, enslaving indigenous peoples and forcing them to explore for gold. But there was not much to be found, fearing the idea of once again returning to Spain empty-handed. Columbus loaded his ship with over 500 indigenous peoples and presented them as a gift to Queen Isabella. She was not at all impressed and immediately refused the gift, believing that any people discovered during Columbus's journey should be considered free Spanish citizens. It was not until 1498 that Columbus once again made the journey across the Atlantic. Remember how he had left his brothers in charge of the settlement at Hispaniola? Well, when he returned, he discovered that the settlement was in a state of uproar. His brothers' cruel leadership and poor management had led to a revolt. In addition, the settlers felt misled and mistreated by Columbus himself. They felt he had lied to them about the riches to be found in this new world, and they were anxious to return home. Many records indicate that life in the Spanish colony was quite difficult, with many awful things happening to the citizens. The situation was so bad that in 1499, Spanish officials were sent across the ocean to arrest Columbus. He was returned to Spain in change, chains and stripped of his title of governor of the Indies. As a result, he lost most of his wealth. While he had one final trip planned, Columbus died in 1506. He never made it to Asia to discover the fame and riches he had dreamed of. While he did not accomplish his goal, it is true that Columbus had a major impact on the entire world. However, there are different opinions about whether his impact and legacy were honorable. And you should know, within 60 years of Columbus first setting foot on Hispaniola, most of the indigenous people, the Tanyo tribe, were completely destroyed. While no one knows exactly how many people were once a part of this thriving tribe, we do know that after being introduced to European illness and forced into slavery, their community was reduced to only a few hundred. The Columbian Exchange, the impact of Christopher Columbus and his idea to sail west, have had undeniable effects on history. While Columbus was certainly not the first person to discover this new world, he was the first to share news of the discovery with Europe, opening up a time of exploration and rapid advancement for many European nations. This new world and new route of exploration eventually led to what was known as the Columbian Exchange. Every time a ship sailed across the Atlantic, resources were exchanged. 
While we can imagine the great benefit of trading items such as food and natural resources, we have to remember that people were being traded as well. Slavery was not a new concept, but the exploration of the Americas certainly fueled the slave trade. Both indigenous peoples and Africans brought to the New World were victims of the cruel industry. In addition, illness was brought to the New World, and many indigenous Americans lost their lives to diseases that were previously unknown to them. While these details are grim and difficult to study, it is also important to remember Christopher Columbus's explorations were part of the history of the United States. Although he never actually set foot in what we now know as the United States, his discoveries opened the door to incredible exploration. Shortly after his voyage, both the British and the French joined in the search for the new land, new wealth, and even new freedoms across the sea. The journey to America's birth is one that is filled with stories of tragedy and hardship, but they are her that they are her stories nonetheless. So while you will need to come to your own conclusions about Columbus and his intentions, it's important to remember that God uses all things, not just good things, for his purpose. Even through our sinfulness and disobedience, God is weaving together a story of his love and redemption. So while we should shouldn't celebrate any atrocities committed by Christopher Columbus, we can certainly be thankful for his God-given curiosity, which began the story of the new nation. And our Bible break is, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. Psalms one thirty nine twelve. God can use even the dark things of our stories for his good. The end.